How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Tales from the Dark Side. This is Season 2, Episode 20, and this one's entitled A Choice of Dreams. Uh, this is from May 4th, uh, Star Wars Day, 1986, and yeah, May 4th, we took a bit of a gap, uh, the last episode was in February, so February, March, April, uh, two months off, and now we're here in May for the, uh, the new episode. That is one thing with live TV that always bugs me is whenever they go on these little gaps and you don't know why and you think you're going to get a new episode and then it's all reruns and then a new episode finally comes and you missed it because you didn't know the show was coming back. Uh, you see why people had those TV guidebooks back in the day. Uh, but anyway, this episode was directed by Jerry Smith and stars Abe Vigoda. The teleplay was by James Uten, uh, based on a story by Edward F. Shaver. In this, a dying gangster character meets a mysterious scientist uh, the scientist said, I can't stop you from dying, but I can preserve your mind forever, and I can give your mind its choice of dreams, hence the episode title there. And overall, this is a, a very cool episode, uh, a very almost Black Mirror-esque episode, the whole idea of preserving your mind, you know, stuff like that, almost a... Uh, you know, Mookie and Pookie kind of did something like this earlier, and with today's modern continuity craze, I could see if they rebooted Darkseid, uh, rewriting this as a sequel to Mookie and Pookie would be fun. Uh, but anyway, a really cool episode. If you guys like gangster characters, you got some cool gangster characters here. Now, that being said, you don't get to see them going out, shooting up places, and committing crime. That stuff they all did in the past, but this is about the man dying, so they're not going to be actively committing crimes right now. But they're still the same very intense, very tough, very macho characters, you know, uh, with lots of moments of intensity brought on by their extreme personalities and you know is sometimes the moment can be uh can be driven you know so cool stuff there and yeah like i said really weighty scenes you know that aren't necessarily super important for the plot but they're gangsters and you establish the atmosphere this way the opening scene has a bunch of you know stuff like this and then one of the final scenes uh, this scene with the gangster second in command. Again, two scenes that aren't super crucial to the plot that they be this heavy, but, you know, crucial to the atmosphere. And you really see these, you know, moments of intensity because, you know, that's what gangsters do, you know? So, yeah, great scenes there. And this is kind of an odd episode of Dark Side because, for the most part, you know where it's going. You know, it's not a twist that he's going to preserve his mind but let the body die. You know, he knows for most of the episode what's going to happen, so it's not a twisty and turny story, but it's all leading up to that decision. Is this what he really wants? Can he go through with it? Because he does have to die to go into this process, and it does lead to a really cool dark side ending, but it is kind of odd, an episode where most of the episode you know where it's uh, heading towards, you know? So overall, a pretty cool one. Like I said, that whole preserving your mind thing, again, a case of dark side being ahead of its time in the stories it chooses to tell, because, you know, like I said, Black Mirror talks about this sort of thing all the time, so yeah, uh, kind of ahead of its time in that way. But again, good characters as well, so two really strong things going for this episode. And yeah, definitely would recommend it. Not personally one of my uh, personal favorites, I'm not really a big gangster fan, but I could see that if you are, this might be like your favorite episode, you know? 
Um, me personally, I'm more into ghosts and haunted houses and weird creatures, you know. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's analyze this episode further by talking a bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, so I'll try to avoid uh, the ending. But I will say my piece on a few plot points and try to uh, break down and analyze this episode further. Uh, we open up with a doctor... He's going to give the news to this gangster character that he's dying and assure him that no, nothing's wrong, I missed nothing, I'm 100% sure you're going to die. And the doctor says, I could have told you this on your the phone, I could have had someone else tell you, but I came down here to tell you personally that you're going to die because I know you're a big gangster, I know you're a scumbag criminal, I know you screwed people over really bad, and I came down here personally to tell you you're going to die because I wanted to see the look on your face when you got the news. So yeah, one of those tough guy sequences I was alluding to before. And the gangster gets up and he looks at him in the eyes and he says, I can read people, that's my special skill. If I look them in the eye, I know for sure if they mean business or not, and I know I can take you. So he says, I know the head of the hospital, I'm going to use my influence to have you fired. And the doctor's like, I don't think you can, but even if you can, you're still going to die, and none of your influence is going to prevent this. So yeah, it's a scene that could have just been, here's the bad news, but they threw in this whole other element of the doctor going, I'm glad you're dead. And yeah, so really just adds another layer to this that, yeah, wasn't 100% necessary for the plot, but adds so much atmosphere to this story, you know? Uh, but anyway, the next day, a guy shows up, says he wants to talk to him, and his card says Afterlife as the uh, corporation name. And the guy thinks, how do they know this already? The first of the vultures are starting to show up. Um, and the man says, I know because I have to know. My business is very expensive and in turn, only a handful of people can afford me. So I have to know when they're going to come up. And I have to know quick because I have to do this right before you die so I can really miss my window. And he says, I have an opportunity for you. And the guy's about to send him off. He's a vulture. He's just trying to prey on a dying man. And he's about to send him off when he looks in his eyes. You know, his special power to look people in the eyes and know if they mean business. And he looks in this guy's eyes and he definitely does mean business, and he says, okay, you can actually stay and talk to me, and you get a sense that 99% of the other people wouldn't get this opportunity, but he's going to listen to him, and he says, there's nothing I can do to stop death. Death is inevitable. Death comes for everyone. Your body will die, but I need to preserve your mind. And if I preserve your mind, I can control what environment I put it in. I can give you your choice of dreams. And yeah, you'll be physically dead, but your mind will be living on forever in your happiest moments and eternity of happiness. I can give that to you. And he has uh, two conditions. It's $10 million dollars. Which, if you're going to be dead, what do you care if you spend $10 million? You know, you, you're dead. Um, but then he also says, uh, the number on the card, you have to call it between noon and 1210. Literally a 10-minute window you can call in. And it does lead to kind of a pointless scene. The guy has the card and he waits till literally the last minute to call the number, and he doesn't call the number in time. However, the next day he just gets a new card and he calls the number the next day. 
really, it's kind of a pointless thing having this tension and then almost immediately resolving it. I don't know. Like, if, I think in the novel, right, the, the short story this is based on, rather, they probably would have gone a little longer. And if he had gone a little longer where you thought he really missed his chance and he was kind of preparing his affairs and then miraculously it comes out of the blue, a little bit more time would have helped with this twist. Um, I think if they didn't have the time to do that, he should have just barely made it. You know, you still have the tension of him almost missing the 10-minute uh, window, but if he just gets the call in at the last minute, that's still the tension, and you don't have that kind of retroactive lack of tension by getting another card again really quick, you know? So, yeah, that scene didn't work out the best. Um, but anyway, uh, after that, you get some cool buildup, because he's made his arrangements, and now he's waiting to go in, you know to the mind world and you get to see the doctor he's got a really cool laboratory almost completely dark with a few little futuristic machines a really cool set and you get to see like where they scan his mind and they see his past trauma you know he had a unhealthy relationship with his father the uh, wife that relationship crumbled as well and he lost her and you get to see that you know he was a pretty dark and bad dude who had several moments in his own life that were really, really terrible. Uh, in addition to this, you do also get, like I hinted at earlier, a pretty intense scene with his second of command, which, again, you know, wasn't something super necessary for the plot, but a really good atmospheric gangster scene, and yeah, put that scene in there, you know? Anyway... Uh, like I was talking about earlier, a ton of that gangster atmosphere, which, you know, I personally am not the biggest into, but I know a lot of people love gangster movies, and if you do, this will probably be one of your favorite Dark Side episodes for the characters, plus that whole Black Mirror mind preservation thing really ahead of its time, and overall two really strong elements working in favor for this episode. Like I said, not personally my favorite. I'm much more of a fan of the classic haunted house monster horror, but, you know, still, this episode really does a lot, and I definitely could recommend it. Uh, so anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. Uh, in a little bit, a playlist should pop up here on the bottom. This should be my Tales from the Dark Side playlist. I've talked about all the past episodes of this show on here, so all of Season 1 and most of Season 2. There's only four episodes left in Season 2, so I'm really hoping I can get to that pretty soon. Really would be great to, to round out this season before the Halloween season's over. Um... So, all of one, most of two, I did a season one overview, the Joe Hill comic, and the Christmas episodes early. So, if you want to see me talk about a bunch of Dark Side, a playlist should be here any minute now. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Dark Side playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.